At the other side of the wing containing the Salle du Manège and the Salle des Etats is the Cour Visconti. It remained just a courtyard, inaccessible to the public until the 21st century. The restoration of the facades took place from January to December 2006. On the 26th of July 2008, the groundbreaking ceremony took place in the presence of President Nicolas Sarkozy. The excavation was 40 meters deep. Extra support was put in place for the existing facades. This allowed the architects Rudi Ricciotti and Mario Bellini to install two stories for the 18,000 works of the new Department of Islamic Arts over another level designed for technical facilities. The roof of undulating glass is set back from the historic facades, thus retaining the appearance of the courtyard. To the east of these two courtyards is another small courtyard, now known as the Cour du Sphinx. It was created in 1663 as part of Le Vaux's repair and extension of the Petite Galerie after the fire. It was then known as the Cour de la Reine, the Queen's Courtyard. It became the Cour de l'Infant in the 18th century, during the Infanta's stay in the former Queen Mother's apartments. Later, it became the museum courtyard, when it was the entrance to the Napoleon Museum. From 1828, to 1848, it housed the Sphinx of Tarnis, which was acquired by the Louvre in 1826 as part of the Salt Collection. It has retained the name of Cour du Sphinx. It became fully a courtyard, with buildings on all sides, when Napoleon III's new Louvre was built. In 1934, it was roofed with glass and became one of the rooms of the museum.
In the 21st century, it has also been a storeroom when the Louvre was threatened by floods and a restoration workshop. The narrow wing, which closed off the Cour du Sphinx and separated it from the Cour Visconti, contained storage space on the ground floor and a museum gallery on the first floor. This gallery, running from the Dare staircase southwards to the Grande Galerie, was called the Salle des Sept Maîtres, the Seven Meter Room because that was its height. It was opened to the public in 1859. The decoration by Alexandre Dominique de Nuel was poppy red, while the paintwork of the coving imitated gold brocade fabric, like the recent redecoration of the Grande Galerie. The room was illuminated by a glass roof, Primitive Italian paintings by Giotto, Filippo Lippi, Cimabue were displayed there. The ground floor also became a gallery of the museum in 1895 as the Salle d'Afrique, where Roman antiquities from Algeria, Cyrenaica and Tunisia were on show a result of a large number of archaeological expeditions in the 19th century. This photograph shows the Salle des Sept Maîtres largely emptied at the beginning of the First World War. Other photographs show it before and after the renovation which led to the reopening in January 1920. A painting of the Salle des Sept Maîtres by Clemente Castelli dates from 1921. Renovation in 1997 by the architect of the renovation of the Salle des Etats, Lorenzo Piqueras, relieved the monotony of the long, narrow room, as well as increasing hanging space, by adding panels at right angles to the walls, finished, like the walls, in waxed plaster. Paintings are much less densely hung. At the sides of the Dumont vestibule, steps lead up to two galleries above the stables. The stone-clad vaults and paving of coloured marbles were designed by Le Fuel under the influence of the renovations in 1824 in the old Louvre of the Salle des Cariatides and the Salle d'Angoulême, designed by Le Fuel's predecessor, Pierre Fontaine. Neither gallery was ready to be opened before 1863. To the east, the Galerie d'Arru runs from the Denon vestibule and ends at the base of the Daru staircase. It was intended for replicas of the carvings of Trajan's column. In 1862, moulds from the column started to be made for Napoleon III, and casts from them 
were displayed here. Entering from the vestibule, the sculptures that now most strike the eye are the Borghese vase and the Borghese gladiator, or rather warrior. The Dachy Gallery has been used in the 21st century for fundraising gala dinners. The Molien Gallery runs from the vestibule to the foot of the Molien staircase. The gallery was first intended for Roman iconography. The objects on display there were many and crowded, as shown in this photograph from between 1876 and 1883. A photograph showing the same area after a reorganization in 1883 presents a similar multiplicity of objects displayed on a freestanding panel. In both photographs, Benvenuto Cellini's Nymph of Fontainebleau is visible. This sculpture had been commissioned by François I for the Château of Fontainebleau, but Henry II had it placed above the gateway to Anne in 1552-54. Confiscated by the Revolution and replaced at Anne by a replica, it underwent restoration in 1811 and was set above the balcony in the Salle des Cariatides. It was replaced there by a replica in 1849 and taken to the sculpture rooms. It is now situated on the first landing of the Molien staircase. By 1903, the view of the gallery was very different. It was now really a sculpture gallery. In the 1960s, the Molien Gallery was often used as an exhibition hall. Michelangelo's rebellious slave and dying slave had been requisitioned by the revolutionary state and entered the Louvre Museum in 1794. They took their definitive place in the Michelangelo Gallery devoted to Italian sculpture in 1984 with the creation of the Grand Louvre. Having been removed for a special exhibition in 2020, the statues were examined, conserved, restored and cleaned before being returned to the Michelangelo Gallery in March 2022 on a lower base which allowed them to be seen better. Walking through this gallery from the vestibule, one passes Canova's Psyche revived by Cupid's kiss and Giambologna's winged Mercury. 
Michelangelo's slaves are the culmination of this walk. They stand in front of a monumental archway from the Palazzo Stanga di Castelnuovo in Cremona. It forms a triumphal arch through which the eye, if not the step, rises up the Molien staircase. Above these two galleries, at each side of the Salle de Nom, were rooms for paintings. To the east, the Salle d'Arri, and to the west, the Salle Molien. The two rooms are symmetrical. They are long, rectangular rooms with a curved ceiling curving up to a rectangular roof light. Both were decorated by Alexandre Dominique de Nuel with a red and gold décor, completed in 1863. The coving of the long walls carries medallions which bear the names and dates of French painters surrounded by arabesques, while the short walls carry the imperial eagle. These red rooms have had their colour renewed several times. In 1969, Pierre Soulage, famous for his non-figurative paintings in black, contributed to their being repainted in Etruscan red. Each room has two rectangular doors leading to the Salle de Nom in the centre of the wing. At the other extremity of each room is an arched doorway leading to the head of a staircase in the end pavilion of the wing. The Salle Molien originally showed French paintings of the 17th century while the Salle d'Arri was devoted to French paintings of the 18th and 19th centuries. Now the Salle d'Arri shows French neoclassical paintings such as here, from left to right, Anne-Louis Giraud de Triozon, The Sleep of Endymion, Jacques-Louis David, The Death of Marat, and Pierre Narcisse Guérin, The Return of Marcus Sextus. Here, Jacques-Louis David, The Coronation of Napoleon, and here, David, The Oath of the Horatii, and the lictors bringing to Brutus the bodies of his dead sons. The Salmolien displays French romantic paintings such as, here, from left to right, Théodore Géricault, the charging chasseur, Antoine Jean Gros, Bonaparte visiting the plague victims of Jaffa, and his equestrian portrait of Joachim Murat. Here, Jericho, the raft of the Medusa, and here, Liberty leading the people by Eugène de la Croix. In March 2018, the Salmolien witnessed a demonstration protesting against the Louvre's sponsorship by oil company Total. Today, the elegant balustrades of the Molien staircase seem to contain the steps as their curving and widening space appears to overflow, lapping like waves on the stone floor at their base.
Going upwards, westwards, once narrowed, the steps rise straight at right angles to the first west landing. This landing is a rectangle, at two sides of which the stairs, doubled, sweep upwards in a curve which straightens out to reach, at right angles, the second east landing. Here an arch leads at the centre of the pilastered wall to the Salle Molien. At this level the landing continues westward along the north wall and then southward along the west wall to form balconies which between freestanding columns overlook two sides of the staircase. On the south side the pilasters on the solid wall match the columns to their right and opposite. The main structure of the staircase was built in 1852 to 1854, and the décor studied from 1855 to 1856. But at the inauguration on August the 14th, 1857, the balustrades and arcade were made of wood disguised and decorated with tapestries and hangings. Construction was halted for lack of funds in 1859 and resumed in 1868. At the centre of the ceiling decoration is a circular painting by Charles-Louis Muller. It was commissioned by Le Fuel on the 22nd of July, 1869, at a cost of 10,000 francs. It represents a female figure of glory, distributing laurel wreaths to the arts. She appears to be swooping down to face those who ascend the staircase. Some sketches by Muller survive. The painting's circular frame is composed of gilded fruit. Beneath the painting, at the four sides of the staircase, are four crescent-shaped lunettes, each consisting of a carved bas-relief. Each one represents a goddess aided by cupids. On the west side, the activity of sculpture is carved by Duchoisel. On the north side, engraving is carved by Charles Louis Janson. On the east side, painting is carved by Ernest Eugène Yol, seen here part way through cleaning. On the south side, architecture is carved by Justin Chrysostome Sanson. At each corner of the ceiling, a spray of gilded foliage, springing from a stucco vase, rises in front of the gilded framework outlining the top of the lunettes. The frames of the central painting and those of the lunettes are married by a stucco shield bearing a female head. The four spandrels between the circular framework and the curved framework of the lunettes are each filled with two stucco cupids carrying an elaborately shaped but empty cartouche. Beneath the eight cupids' feet are four painters' palettes. On the east side, under the lunette, a great carved arch stands over most of the landing. 
In its centre is the arched entrance to the Salle Molien. The arch was not completed until 1914, and so its sculptures include the carved R.F. of the French Republic. Other images, too, seem not to conform to the plaster sketches from 1868 attributed to François Théophile Murger. On the other three sides, the roundness of the arch is echoed by cartwheel-shaped false windows of opaque but reflective glass. The frame of each oculus is gilded, as is the leading around each section of glass. These large oculi are supported above the columns or pilasters by winged lions. Beside the winged lions, volutes support Atlantes or Caryatids carrying a pediment. If Atlantes are male and Caryatids are female, the west side has Atlantes and the north and south sides Caryatids. All were designed by Pierre Jules Cavalier. On the north and south sides, the pediment is linked to the frame of the oculus by a cartouche. This cartouche is not quite identical to the one illustrated in a catalogue of Feu Lassus Architect, the late Lassus architect. This may be, perhaps, Jean-Baptiste Lassus, an enthusiastic lover of Gothic architecture who worked with Dubon on the restoration of the Sainte-Chapelle and with Viollet-le-Duc on Notre-Dame. He died in 1857. On the west side, the Atlantes carry long gilded staffs and the pediment is linked to the frame of the oculus by an eagle with outspread wings standing on a gilded globe studded with imperial bees. In 1911, work began again under the direction of Victor Auguste Blavet. Corinthian capitals were added to the columns and pilasters. They did not copy the models photographed by Baldus in about 1868. The wrought iron balustrades were added, as well as the grills of the balconies. Their pattern also failed to conform to the plaster sketches provided by Murger in about 1868. The stone arcades between the base of the staircase and the Galerie Molien were also completed at this time. Much later, in 2016, the west and north sides of the upper landing were transformed by Mathieu Luaner to form the Café Molien. It also occupied the outside terrace over the north side of the Galerie Molien. Dust and grime had accumulated since 1914 on the ceiling of the Molien staircase, 
when it was decided to clean and restore it in 2022. Placing of statuary on the Molien staircase has varied. The upper landing has been pictured both with and without statues. The magazine L'Illustration of the 18th of July 1914 carries a photograph of the staircase apparently with a version of the lower cone placed on the lower landing. The original lower cone had been returned to the Vatican after the fall of the First Empire. It is Primaticcio's bronze cast of it, dating from about 1540, which had been moved from Fontainebleau to the Louvre in 1870, that appears to be displayed here. It was returned to Fontainebleau in 1987. Another photograph of the staircase shows, in the same position, the winged victory of Brescia, a replica given by the town of Brescia to Napoleon III after the 1861 Battle of Solferino. It stood in the niche of the Denon vestibule, before the niche was opened up to become an entrance to the Salle du Manège in 1929. The statue now stands on the much smaller landing of the Colbert staircase. The Cellini nymph of Fontainebleau seems now to be permanently in this position. In the same black and white photograph, to the right of the base of the staircase is placed the dying Seneca, otherwise known as the old fisherman. It is now in the Salle du Manège. The sculpture of a boar at the left of the base of the staircase appears to be the Borghese boar, acquired in 1807, a copy of the Porcellino in the Uffizi in Florence. This copy is now also in the Salle du Manège. In the north-facing south wing of the new Louvre, the Daru staircase is at the other end from the Molien staircase. Separated from it by the Molien and Daru rooms and galleries and the Donon room and vestibule. Staircases in this area of the Louvre had become increasingly public and grand. When Anne of Austria's apartment on the ground floor of the Petite Galerie was being prepared for the Spanish Infanta in 1722, a staircase was built leading up to the Salon Carré. It was shown in Blondel's plan of 1756. After the Infanta's return to Spain, her staircase was used by the public to access the annual art exhibition. The view of the Salon in 1753 by Gabriel de Saint-Aubin shows this staircase. Jacques Germain Soufflot designed a new, more important staircase for this purpose, which was built after his death in 1780 by his successor, Maximilien Brébion. The staircase designed by Fontaine and Percier for Napoleon I's museum was more magnificent. The structural work was completed in 1807 
but decoration was only finished during the restoration under the supervision of the same architects. Le Fuel was reluctant to destroy and replace this magnificent staircase and was able to retain the decoration of the top level in the rooms now named after Percier and Fontaine. This was at least partly because the Percier and Fontaine grand staircase had run north-south and Le Fuel's new staircase, the Dari staircase, ran east-west, to parallel in situation the Molien staircase. In design, however, the long, elegant Dari staircase differed greatly from the curved and colourful Molien staircase. Le Fuel's new staircase can be discerned in modern photos, though improvements have been made by his successors as architects of the Louvre. The staircase was to be lofty and spacious, with slender but sculpted piers rising to a series of domes supported by airy arches. It was to be flooded with light. On the ground floor, three windows would be opened on the north and south sides. Upstairs, four windows would open on the side of the Cour Napoléon and two on the side of the Cour du Sphinx. An oculus and six stained glass windows would throw light from the domes. Le Fuel designed a balustrade. Like the rest of the decoration, it remained unfinished at his death in 1880. The winged victory of Samothrace was unearthed in 1863 by Charles Champoison, then temporary vice-consul in Adrianople, now Edirne in Turkey. Further fragments were recognised by Viennese archaeologists in 1875. The pieces were put together and the statue restored by Félix Ravesson Molien. It was placed at the head of the Daru staircase in 1883 against a background of Pompeian red dotted with golden yellow rosettes. This colouring was part of the design of Le Fuel's successor, Edmond Guillaume, who undertook the decoration of the staircase after Le Fuel's death. Stained glass was placed in windows of the domes. A team of Italian specialists created colourful mosaics for the ceiling, after a design by Jules Eugène Le Neveu. Sketches of his are in the Musée des Beaux-Arts in Angers. Some of the stonework was left rough-hewn to be sculpted later. The Exposition Universelle was held in Paris in 1900. Among the constructions built for the occasion were the Grand Palais, the Petit Palais, the Alexander III Bridge and the Gare d'Orsay. From 1901 to 1934, the contents of the archaeological pavilion at the exhibition were displayed on the Dari staircase. They included a reconstruction 
of the Siphnian treasury from Delphi. It was not as securely protected during the First World War as was the winged victory. Work started again in 1932 to 1934 when the architect of the Louvre, Camille Lefebvre, and his successor, Albert Ferrand, undertook the task of giving the staircase a more monumental appearance. The lighting was changed, filling in the lower side windows so that light would come only from above and from domes where the stained glass was replaced by clear glass. Lower floors were darker as a result of this change. The Delphi casts were removed, the winged victory was brought forward to make it more prominent and visible from the bottom of the staircase. The steps were widened on each side and an Art Deco rail added. In 1997, the staircase was extended down to the new gallery of ancient Greece, situated in what had been part of the imperial stables. The focus of the staircase, the winged victory, was removed in September 2013 for conservation and restoration. After ten months, in July 2014, it returned to the top of the stairs. The Dahu staircase has long been a stage for film and photographs. Belfigur, a silent film directed by Henri de Fontaine in 1927. Escalier de service, directed by Carlo Rim in 1954. Funny Face, directed by Stanley Donan in 1957 and starring Audrey Hepburn. Bande à part, directed by Jean-Luc Godard in 1964. The Dreamers, directed by Bernardo Bertolucci in 2003. Beyoncé and Jay-Z in 2018.